Okay, so welcome. Um, my name is Ann Bishop and I work for Therapy Gardens. And Therapy Gardens is a umbrella organization that started out doing a lot of gardening and then added healthy living topics. And now we've added something called Senior University that does more historical and um, current topics like artificial intelligence. And I give two talks. One is on the first three women senators that you've never heard of, which I won't tell you because hopefully you'll bring me back to hear their stories. But they were all born in the 1800s. So they had very different upbringings than we've had. And the second one I do that's historical is my father survived the Bataan Death March three and a half years in Japanese prison camps, including the hell ships, and came home with a group of um, survivors from the New England area to start the American Defenders of Bataan and Corregidor, which became a national organization. So that's a pretty cool story. And while I was researching it to present it, I found out that they actually had a parade in downtown Boston and closed the schools for the day so that the school children could go to the parade to honor them. But here I am talking about Italian recipes. And actually, it's kind of interesting how I got to be here. My mom passed away in August of 2022 at 103 and eight months. She was quite a lady. And she was always telling me to go to the Council of Aging because she and my father were very involved. And I was always telling her, I'm too young, Mom. <laughs> so I didn't want to go. But my, the last year of my mom's life, I was mostly taking care of her because I am a nurse. And then when she did pass away, I didn't have a lot of things to do. And my it's kind of a sad story. My daughter-in-law's mother had ALS at the same time, and she passed away a month after my mother did. And if I wasn't with my mom, I was with my grandchildren. So I really didn't have much to do, and I started going to the Council of Aging. And I went to a gardening class last spring on herb gardening, which I love. And he mentioned that he gave all these other talks. So literally, I could feel my mother pushing me to the front of the room at the end of the talk. And I asked him if he was hiring, and he said, well, what could you do for me? And I said, well, I'm a retired nurse practitioner with a master's degree in public health, and I specialize in health education and health promotion. And he goes, you're hired. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been doing it since the end of August, and I absolutely love it because I retired from clinical work in 2015, and I took on more classes at Simmons University, where I had been teaching a little bit, but then I went to part-time. And I was volunteering at the Edward M. Kennedy Institute for the United States Senate, so I had a pretty busy retirement. But after 2022, I didn't really have those anymore because that both of those jobs had dried up because of COVID. So I'm so grateful to have found this, and I love every class that I give. And because I am who I am, I do a lot of extra research into the topics. Kind of drives Dave a little crazy, but we'll keep that a secret <laughs> now that I'm on TV. Um, but I love to look up the things, the story behind the story, as they say. So the reason that um, he put this together is because his grandparents immigrated from Italy, and his father, his, his grandfather was a chef, and his father became a chef, and he was a chef at the European restaurant in the North End. So some of you probably ate there. I know I did many times as a young person, and I always imagine that one of my meals might have actually been prepared by Dave's father. So. He's given us an overview of the different regions of Italy, and there's quite a few, more than I realized. And they have differences and similarities. And Stanley Tucci series seems to do a great job of going through all of these different regions. For some people, it just comes down to the north, where you're more likely to find a cream sauce on your food, or the south, where you're more likely to find a tomato sauce. The history of pasta is, we probably all know that it's not Italian in its origin. It dates back to ancient China. And the Romans had a dish they called lagana, which was flat dough that they boiled. 
modern pasta, what we eat today, was developed in Italy <clears throat> during the Middle Ages. Drying made it easy to store. And the different regions in Italy used different pasta shapes, sizes, and ingredients. The large pastas like ziti and pacheri are for heartier sauces, such as a bolognese. Thinner pastas like linguine are good for tomato and cream sauces, and pastini, little pasta, for soups and stews. I should also mention that you will all have access to this entire presentation. I've left some cards at the table. You will just go on your computer to info at therapygardens.com and go to the contact section, put in your contact information, and then send a message that says, you saw this and you wanted to have the PowerPoint presentation sent to you and he'll send it to you in an email. So that's why you don't need to worry about taking. Great, I just spilled water on my computer. Okay, tomatoes. Tomatoes were brought to Europe from South America by Spanish conquerors. Tomatoes started gaining popularity in Italy during the 16th century. Naples became known for tomato cultivation due to favorable climate and the volcanic soil. So the soil makes those San Marzano tomatoes the best tomatoes to use because they're grown in volcanic soil. Neapolitans, people from Nap Naples, eventually created pizza and many of the pasta recipes that we know today. Naples, Italy is located in the Campania region of Italy and is one of the oldest communities inhabited, one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. It was founded by ancient Greeks as Neapolis. It dates back to 2,800 years. It invented pizza, the Neapolitan pizza, and the San Marzano tomatoes, which are prized for their culinary properties are grown in Campania, about 20 miles from Naples. So what are the sauces? So a first recipe is for pomodoro sauce. Um, pomodoro equals tomato in Italian. Three or four fresh tomatoes, garlic, and why, why do we like garlic? Garlic is gonna be everywhere in Italian, but it's everywhere else. It's because garlic is high in antioxidants. So antioxidants are what kill off the free radicals and the free radicals in our body are what cause disease. So our body has free radicals anyway, but you increase your free radicals if you don't eat right and if you don't exercise and if you don't get a good night's sleep, all the things we know to do. And you can also increase your free radicals if you happen to be exposed to certain chemicals or you fly a lot like on a regular basis or you have exposure to x-rays. But the antioxidants, which are found in a lot of our foods in high levels, they will counteract those free radicals. And one to two cloves of garlic a day is all you need to get the benefit of those free radicals from garlic. We always like to use extra virgin olive oil and fresh basil, but you can use the basil from the jars if that's what you have. If you do happen to have an herb garden and you grow basil or thyme or rosemary, you can take it out at the end of the season, wash it off, dry it a bit, chop it up and put it into ice cube trays. And you can either freeze it in water or you can freeze it in olive oil. And you can buy those little ice cube trays with the just little round circles so that you only are getting a little bit. Once it freezes, you just pop them all out into a freezer bag and then you've got fresh herbs all winter long. And again, you can do it in just water if you're not going to want to use olive oil in your recipe, but you can also do it in olive oil. So you blanch and peel the tomatoes. So you probably know you put them in hot water for a couple of minutes and then you drain them and run some cold water over them and the peel will come off easily. The skin will peel off easily. 
you want to chop and reserve the juices. And you know, the inside of the tomato has what's called the placenta and the seeds. People don't like those in their sauces and they scoop them out, but you don't need to throw them away. You can put them aside, chop them up or put them in a blender and put them back in the sauce or the soup because they'll no longer be looking like a placenta or a seed. They'll just be a, a liquid. Um, and then you're going to saute the minced onion and the chopped the, and garlic and the chopped onion in your olive oil until you can smell all those wonderful fragrances. Add in your tomatoes, juices, salt, and pepper. And we try to go low on the salt, 2,300 milligrams of salt in one teaspoon, and that's really all you're allowed in a day if you want to be on a diet that doesn't you know, bother your blood pressure. Um, so you sparingly use your salt. I was asked, well, do you use table salt? Do you use sea salt? Can you use kosher salt? So guess what? There's absolutely no difference in any of those three salts except the way they're prepared and the size of the salt. So the table salt is mined and it's processed, and they add an ingredient to make it easier to cook with. The sea salt is from the sea, and they evaporate the water out of it, and it stays coarser. And the kosher salt just goes through the kosher process, and it is a larger even than the sea salt, because you often will grind your sea salt. And they say that the kosher salt has a higher flavor but none of them have any nutrients that give you any benefit. It's just for taste. Pink salt is salt. It's just, there's nothing special about it. It comes from a certain place, and so you're supporting the local people in their endeavors, but there's nothing in any of the salts that gives you any more benefit. It's just for flavor. And so some people may feel that it's a different flavor. And also those sea salts and kosher salts usually don't have iodine in them. So iodine was put in when we noticed that children were developing goiter and that's very unusual for children to develop goiter and they realized it was a lack of iodine in their diet. So Morton Salt always says iodized, non-iodized. And then <clears throat> you can add some torn basil leaves at the end and adjust for seasoning and serve over pasta. All of your sauces you can freeze. For marinara sauce, you're gonna use fresh sauce tomatoes. So usually those are um, plum tomatoes. If you're going to buy a tomato in the store to make your own sauce, plum tomatoes are good for that. You use your olive oil, your garlics, an onion, some basil, oregano, salt, pepper, and your fresh basil leaves. Those are probably all the ingredients that you see on your marinara sauce that you buy in the store. But what you will also see in those um, is the high salt content. So some can be very high in salt. Ragu is making a new one called Simply, Simply Something. I saw it the other day and it's lower and some of them will say lower. But if you're worried about salt, you have to pay attention to what's in the, um, whatever you buy in the store. So we're saying if you make your own marinara sauce, you can control that. And if you're putting half a teaspoon of salt into your sauce, you're really only getting a very tiny amount and a half a cup to a cup. You, again, blanch your tomatoes and remove the skins, dice them up, and I told you what to do with the innards. Saute the onions and garlic until they're soft, and then add the tomatoes and remaining ingredients and simmer for 40 minutes. Blend to the desired consistency and adjust the seasoning, and add the fresh basils before serving. So you know, sometimes when you saute your garlic, it gets crusty before it's ready. So you have to be careful to keep your um, the heat at a low. But if any of you are gourmet cooks and want the best gourmet pan that will never burn, it's called the All Pan, and it's a 
deep saute pan with a stainless steel inner um, strainer so you can steam things and then it has a t big top on it so you could actually cook a whole chicken in it if you wanted to and you never ever burn your garlic in that pan and I would never have bought that fancy pan for myself but my daughter-in-law did <laughs> and I'm very grateful but it does cost $145 unless you catch Good Morning America deals and steals and you can get it for $75 but it is like the best gift for a um, wedding shower gift because you're gonna spend a lot of money on a wedding shower gift probably and they'll thank you forever. And they come in really pretty colors too. All Pan, A-L-L-P-A-N. It's called the All Pan. You can find it on the internet. Um, I usually don't advertise, I'm always trying to find out the easiest way to do something and the less expensive way to do something and I get no money back for saying the all pan, I'm just saying it's the best pan. Um, super fast spaghetti sauce, if you're in a rush, you're gonna um, here use olive oil to um, saute your garlic and you're gonna use some red wine, um, you're gonna cook your pasta and reserve a cup of the pasta water, sauteing your garlic and olive oil, add your red wine and cook another 15 or 20 seconds, stir in your tomato paste, pasta water and Italian seasoning and bring to a boil. Then simmer on low for 10 minutes and toss it with the cooked pasta. So it's a very simple, easy way to make a quick meal. The top secret spaghetti sauce, according to Dave, is the San Marzano tomatoes. And you're going to use um, salt, pork, and olive oil. Again, if you're watching your sodium, be careful with the salt pork. You're going to use country style pork ribs, bone in, hot and sweet sausages, meatballs or brassiole, a small can of tomato paste a splash of red or white wine or water, a whole bulb of garlic minced, some dried basil, thyme, and oregano, a three-finger pinch of cayenne pepper, and salt and pepper to taste. So this obviously is going to be spicy. And again, cooking here, there's not really a lot to describe because you cook certain things and then you add certain things and it's just a repeat, repeat, repeat. But you heat your salt pork and olive oil and you brown your meat and set it aside and you add your garlic and dried seasonings and you saute and then you deglaze with a little wine and then add the remaining ingredients and return the meat to the pan and simmer for several hours and that will make it very, very flavorful and it will be spicy. Soups, very Italian. Chicken soup with pastina. Shredded chicken. So how do we get shredded chicken? A lot of people will buy a cooked roasted chicken and you can do that. But just remember it's got a lot of oil on it and it does add fat to it. So if you're going to use a roasted chicken that you buy at the grocery store, make sure you get all the, um, the skin off of it and Kind of, you can kind of squeeze out some of the fat with a paper towel. And then you shred it, or you can cook your own chicken. And you want some celery, some carrots, chicken stock. Okay, what do we say about chicken stock? So chicken stock has a lot of sodium in it, but you can buy low-salt chicken stock. If you have a Trader Joe's, I think you have a Trader Joe's in Wellesley, don't you? Not anymore? Oh, need them. That's right, need them. So they sell a low sodium chicken stock that only has 50 milligrams in a cup. And then later in the presentation, he shows you some others, but they start at 130 milligrams. But how could you make your own chicken stock? So I'm sure you've all come across Herbox no salt chicken bouillon packets. I have never done this until I started teaching these courses and then my sister who's a vegetarian said oh I do that all the time so what I'm talking about is when you're steaming vegetables 
Instead of throwing that water away, you save it and you put it in a jar in your refrigerator. And then when you're going to make a soup, you use that as your stock. And you, if you want a chicken flavored, then you use the no salt per box flavoring or vegetable or beef. You just add that in. And it has, I was shocked at how different my soups tasted and how delicious they tasted. And another thing that Dave says to do is when you're going to cook your vegetables in a different way, maybe roast them or saute them, you take the ends of your carrots and the ends of your onions and the ends of your zucchini and you just take what you would throw in the garbage and put it in a freezer bag in the freezer. And then when you've got enough stuff in there, you just put it in a big pot of water and boil it all down, strain it out, and you've got your your base that doesn't have any salt in it and it's very, very flavorful. flavorful. You're gonna use cooked pastina for this recipe and fresh or dried herbs and some grated Parmesan cheese. So again, you'll saute your vegetables in olive oil until softened, but I tend to steam them. Then I don't have to use so much olive oil. Once I've steamed my vegetables, I might put like a teaspoon of olive oil into the soup, but I'm not sauteing them in olive oil because I'm on Weight Watchers. So I'm very careful about those points and this is um, a way to reduce the points. Um, Then you're gonna add soup to the cooked chicken and pastina and garnish with your chopped fresh herbs. So this looks like one of those really nice cold rainy day soups. Lettuce soup, I've never made this, I never heard of it before I started teaching the course, but it does, uh, it is a a soup. You're using lettuce and an onion or leeks and leeks definitely have a different flavor than onion and some chicken stock and salt and pepper. And that's all it is, sauteing your onion and lettuce and then add the chicken stock and salt and pepper. You know, I should really ask Dave how to pronounce all these words because pizza is my, (laughs) is what I can say. Um, So pasta e fagioli, pasta (laughs) fazul. is pasta and beans. So onions, carrots, and celery. Always should have those in your refrigerator if you're gonna make soups. Um, Crushed tomatoes, chicken stock or vegetable, dried oregano and thyme, red pepper flakes, give it a little kick. Cannelli beans, cannelli beans are very, very good for you. They're very high in fiber and they're very high in B vitamins. So all beans are good for you. Cannelli beans are very good for you. And then you're going to um, add all your remaining ingredients except for the pasta, simmer and taste for seasoning. Add cooked pasta just before serving and put a little Parmesan or Romano cheese on top. Oh, still here. Here are the other soups. We don't have recipes for these, but just adding in a minestrone which um, is a variety of vegetables, tomatoes, beans, pasta, or rice, and often flavored with herbs and can be made with or without meat. Ribolita, a Tuscan soup that's known for its hearty and rustic nature. It's made with a base of vegetables such as kale. A lot of people don't like kale. I do my exercises in the morning to Good Morning America, so I get a lot of my tips from them. And one of the chefs said, if you don't like the taste of kale, buy a package of frozen kale, cook it, and then blend it. And you throw it in and you're never gonna taste it. But kale is one of those super greens that's full of antioxidants and a lot of vitamins. So I started doing that and it's true. I don't taste the kale and I know I'm getting the benefit of having kale in my soup. I also use it when I make turkey burgers. Stale bread is often added to thicken this soup, and it's typically flavored with garlic and herbs. Zeppa Toscana, I think that's a favorite at Olive Garden, isn't it? Don't they have that on the menu at Olive Garden a lot? 
Also from Tuscany, made with Italian sausage, potatoes, kale, or Swiss chard, onions, garlic, and cream. And if you don't want to use cream, you can use light cream, you can use half and half, you can use light half and half, you can use non-fat plain Greek yogurt, and it will cream up your soup. Pasta e sisi, sesi, sisi, <laughs> seisi, seichi. Okay, that's right. A lot of CIs are cheese, right? AKA pasta with chickpeas. Again, chickpeas, very good for you. It consists of a broth made with chickpeas, tomatoes, garlic, onion, and herbs with small pasta added to it. And stracciatella alla romana, a Roman egg drop soup made by whisking eggs with grated Parmesan cheese, nutmeg, and black pepper, then adding the mixture to a hot broth gently stirred to create ribbons of cooked eggs. I think he might have that one in here, I'm not sure. Bracioli, 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 <laughs> bracioli, got it? Okay, um, my cousin's Italian too, I could ask her to do this better. This, um, so you're gonna use thinly sliced beef, some Parmesan cheese, some breadcrumbs, Again, you can get low salt breadcrumbs. Four C's makes a good one. Um, tablespoons of chopped or fresh parsley and salt and pepper. And then for the sauce, olive oil, garlics, a can of crushed tomatoes, a small can of potato, tomato paste, and a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. And so you make the mixture and place a spoonful on top of a slice of beef and roll tightly, securing with twine. Saute chopped onion in olive oil and add the rolled up sliced beef and brown it on all sides. Then stir in your crushed tomatoes, tomato paste, and garlic and simmer for one to one and a half hours until the beef is tender. Remove the twine and serve with more tomato sauce. Sausage and peppers. So we've gone to Fenway Park and had our sausage and peppers. They always smell so good. Um, sweet Italian, or you can use a chicken sausage if you'd like. Um, a red, yellow, and orange bell pepper. Again, peppers, very good for you. Lots of vitamin C in a pepper. One onion sliced, a half a teaspoon of minced garlic, some red wine, olive oil, red pepper flakes, and dried oregano. So in a large skillet over medium heat, you want to cook the sausages in olive oil until browned on all sides, about eight to 10 minutes. Remove and set aside. In the same skillet, saute the sliced peppers, onions, and minced garlic and dried oregano until tender and lightly caramelized, about 10 to 12 minutes. Then add your red wine and return the sausages to the skillet and cook for an additional couple of minutes to heat the sausages through and then adjust the seasoning if needed. And you know, people like that in bread, you know, in your big uh, bread. Basic meatballs. This calls for onion, garlic, cheese, Italian breadcrumbs, Italian parsley, an egg, teaspoon of salt, and ground beef or ground pork. But if you're watching the red meat content, you can substitute fat-free tur uh, ground turkey. Now the interesting thing about cholesterol and meats and poultry is that they all have the same amount of cholesterol. So there's 40 milligrams of cholesterol in an ounce of, um, in three ounces of your chicken, three ounces of your hamburger if it's lean, three ounces in your lean red meat, three ounces in your pork loin. But a lot of times people when they're making their meatballs they're using the stuff that's on sale and so that's going to give you more cholesterol. But you can eat meat if you are careful to eat small amounts of lean cuts of meat. So it's up to you how you want to make your meatballs or make them into turkey meatballs. Half-baked eggplant parm, an eggplant cut into one-inch discs. Some people will salt their eggplant, let it 
the juices sweat out and then dry it. That's an option. Um, it helps get make it so that it cooks more thick than mushy. A beaten egg, some red sauce, some provolone cheese and mozzarella and Parmesan cheese and a cup of seasoned breadcrumbs. So you dip your eggplant discs in the egg and breadcrumbs and lightly brown. Or if you have an air fryer, it's another big, <laughs> big appliance my daughter-in-law bought me. Like I'm one person and I have the biggest air fryer <laughs> that they make. But I did roast a big pork when I had company the other day and it was perfect. So I'm not, I'm not sorry she bought it for me, but it is a big one. And you could um, cook your eggplant in your air fryer. Um, layer the individual eggplant discs, add one slice of provolone, some sauce, sprinkle with shredded cheese and Parmesan cheese, and then bake until the cheese is melted. Okay, who can, can pronounce this one for me? Aglio. Aglio e olio. Ah, uh, see, I've only done this once before, so. <laughs> Spaghetti, minced garlic, red pepper flakes, olive oil, salt and pepper, parmesan cheese, and fresh garlic. There's also a really good spaghetti recipe that uses everything in here um, with lemon, lemon juice. They make a lemon spaghetti, which is, I tried it once and it was really, really good. Again, pretty simple. Cook your spaghetti, reserve some of the pasta cooking water, saute your garlic and red pepper flakes, remove from heat, add your spaghetti and toss. Then add some reserved pasta water if you need to, add Parmesan cheese and chopped parsley and season with salt and black pepper. Simple meal. Putanesca, I know how to say that because I was in a play in college and I was the putan. <laughs> so I know what putanesca means. Um, one package of cooked spaghetti and some olive oil, garlic, red pepper, anchovies if you like, diced tomatoes, pitted black or Kalamata olives. Again, Kalamata olives are gonna have more salt than black olives. Um, two tablespoons of capers, two tablespoons of chopped fresh parsley and salt to taste grated Parmesan cheese. So you saute your minced garlic, red pepper flakes and minced anchovies if you're using them in olive oil. Then add your diced tomatoes, sliced olives, and capers. Simmer 10 minutes. Add your cooked spaghetti to the skillet with the sauce. Toss well to coat and sprinkle with chopped parsley and grated Parmesan cheese if desired. Another way to eat this is instead of using spaghetti, spaghetti squash. Many people like spaghetti squash. <laughs> Some people don't know how to cook it, so they don't, but I can tell you, you take your spaghetti squash, you wash it, you put it in your microwave for three minutes. You take it out of the microwave and stick your knife in it and it will cut in half easily. Turn it inside out and scoop out your seeds. Then spray it with a little olive oil and salt and pepper. Turn it face down on a parchment paper cookie sheet and put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes or until you can stick a toothpick in easily. Then let it cool and you just scoop out your spaghetti squash. And spaghetti squash will soak up any flavor sauce that you put on it. So it isn't spaghetti, it's not pasta, but if you don't want the pasta for some reason, the spaghetti squash is a really good substitute and it will soak up the juices that you've made with your sauce here. And it's quite good. Chicken cacciatore. This is um, one of my favorite res um, recipes. I found it on Jamie Oliver on Good Morning America when he made his one pan mushroom and chicken cacciatore. And it's basically this. They usually use thighs or drumsticks but again, I use the um, boneless, skinless breasts because there's less fat in them. 
olive oil, onion, garlic, and I use the big red onions, bell peppers, mushrooms, and I use portobello, canned tomatoes, tomato paste, red wine, and basil, oregano, and thyme. He happens to use fresh rosemary in his, and salt and pepper to taste. And you just brown your chicken, set it aside, then saute everything else, return the chicken to the skillet, add your tomatoes and tomato paste and the wine, or you could put the wine in first and let it distill a little bit and then put in your canned tomatoes and tomato paste, season it and cover it and simmer it for 30 to 40 minutes, or you can put it in the oven at 350. Um, and adjust your seasoning if needed. And um, this is a great recipe. Everybody loves that. Risotto, four cups of chicken or vegetable broth, two tablespoons of olive oil, onion, garlic, arborio abor rice, um, some white wine maybe, parmesan cheese, and salt and pepper to taste. So you warm your broth and in a separate large saucepan, saute your onion and garlic, add the rice and toast your rice. If desired, add your white wine. Gradually add warm broth to the rice, stirring until absorbed. Sounds like you're making, um, what's that? Pasta, um, the boxes of things that you first you have to saute it before you add the liquids to it or oh, I'm forgetting the name of it vermicelli and things it'll come to me anyway it's in a box here you're not doing a box <laughs> but you are going to toast your rice before you add in your liquids and then the rice is al dente and remove it from the heat stir in your cheese season it with salt and pepper and you can customize it by adding ingredients like sauteed mushrooms, cooked vegetables, or seafood. Serve hot and garnish as desired. And dessert. Here's our Italian cookies, which I hope you all take before I leave. <laughs> um, so you make your Italian cookies with eggs, vegetable oil, sugar, Anise, which gives it that licorice flavor, all purpose flour, baking powder, and a pinch of salt. So you whisk everything together and make it, it makes a dough, and you roll it into balls and then chill it for at least an hour or freeze for 15 to 20 minutes. And then place the cold dough balls on a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper. Again, I hope people use parchment paper because it's really the best way to cook cookies and anything like and saute, I mean roast vegetables or something. Um, it just makes uh, the cooking a lot easier and the cleanup a lot easier too. Um, bake for about 350 degrees for nine minutes or until the tops are set and the bottoms will be lightly browned but the top should still be white. Then you remove the cookies to a cooling rack, and for the glaze, you're gonna use powdered sugar, almond extract, or vanilla extract, salt and cream or milk. Again, half and half, or that free half and half works fine. And um, whisk your ingredients in a small bowl until smooth, adding enough warm cream to get a thin but creamy consistency. Then dip the tops of the cookies in the glaze, then top with the sprinkles. And I'll, yeah. So I think this is one of those recipes that if you cook with your grandchildren, they love to sprinkle anything and they love to put frosting on things. So you could come with the cookie dough already made and they could watch the cookies rise and then make the glaze together and, and, and put it together as a cookie and that's something that kids really, really love to do. So most of the recipes in this presentation are based off of the De Sizio family dinners. This is, um, this is Dave's grandfather, rather handsome looking man, um, arrived in Italy as a child with his family, lived in the same house, well maybe it's his father, lived in the same house in Everett, because yes, it must be his father, because he came with his family. 
um, lived in the same house in Everett his entire life, worked as a chef in the North End, that's right. And most of the recipes in this presentation are based on his cooking. Here he is at the restaurant. Um, yeah, they don't look like that nowadays, do they? Those are the old days. His mother, she cooked a variety of meals, but the Italian influence were there throughout. This is her at her nursing graduation in 1966. And these are family pictures of his family sitting around at the holidays eating their wonderful recipes. And that is your Italian recipe presentation for the day. Again, please take a card so you can get these online. And please finish up the cookies. And don't tell Dave that no. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.